Thank you, Roshi. Greetings, everybody. It seems that somehow or another, I've gotten onto a track of going through the Eightfold Noble Path in these uh, Dharma talks. I've already spoken about right speech and right action. Um, right view. And today I wanted to talk about right resolve and what that means for us as Zen students. And I thought I'd talk a little bit about a couple of koans that illustrate this point really well. Koans for people who are not overly familiar with them, are stories uh, mostly from Zen masters, uh, ancestral teachers, but really they are our stories. Each of us can find our own experience reflected in koans. This is case 41 from the Mumon Khan, Bodhidharma's mind pacifying. Bodhidharma sat facing the wall. The second patriarch stood in the snow. He cut off his arm and presented it to Bodhidharma, crying, my ha mind has no peace as yet. I beg you, Master, please pacify my mind. Bring your mind here, and I will pacify it for you, replied Bodhidharma. I have searched for my mind, and I cannot take hold of it, said the second patriarch. Now your mind is pacified, said Bodhidharma. And of course, there's more to that story in the notes um, in the Sekida uh, version of the Mumon Khan and Hekigan Roku. Um, Sekida writes, when 23 years old, Eka, the second patriarch, started Zazen practice and sat assiduously in silent meditation for eight years. Then he suddenly underwent a spiritual conversion in which a deity appeared and instructed him to go southward. Following the instruction, he journeyed to Shuren Temple to visit Bodhidharma. Bodhidharma at first refused to teach him, saying, the subtle and supreme teachings of the Buddhas can be pursued only by endless assiduity, doing what is hard to do and bearing what is hard to bear, continuing the practice even for kalpas. How can a man of little virtue and much self-conceit dream of achieving it? It will only end in fruitless labor. One night it snowed heavily. Eka stood in the snow. At dawn, the snow was up to his knees. Bodhidharma said, what are you doing there? Eka replied, I beg you to teach me. A legend says that Eka cut off his arm and laid it before Bodhidharma to show his strong determination. At length, Bodhidharma admitted him to his room and the questions and answered, answers followed as described in the present case. Now, when I say that the koans are our own stories, that we find ourselves in the koans, 
of course, I don't mean that we're going to stand in the snow all night long and then cut off our arm. But the pursuit of Dharma, the pursuit of reality, of liberation from delusion, that pursuit requires resolve. Traditionally, right resolve was interpreted to mean renunciation. Renunciation meaning leaving one's home and going to a monastery, giving one's entire life to the pursuit of practice, the pursuit of Dharma. There's a practice in the Japanese Zen tradition. I don't know if the same tradition applies to um, the Chinese Zen tradition, but in Japanese Zen monasteries, there's a tradition of refusing entrance to the postulates someone who comes asking to be admitted to study and pursue practice. The head monk will find any excuse for refusing admittance. And the postulate may have to sit all night long and sometimes for days on end in front of the entry, the entrance to the monastery, just sitting by him or herself, sitting and sitting and sitting. And they'll bring him some food. And of course, he can get up to walk about a little bit to stretch his legs. But it's basically a one person session performed to show your resolve to enter into the way. And so the question for each of us is how do we practice renunciation? What is it to renounce one's home, renounce one's, one's what? What are we willing to sacrifice and in what way to pursue the truth? Perhaps sacrificing an addiction, whether to drugs or money or fame or whatever, or sacrificing one's idea about who one is. But Dharma cannot be pursued without sacrifice. The sacrifice may simply be sacrificing time, giving up a week of vacation to go do a Rohatsu session once we are able to hold session in person again. There's no knowing what will be demanded of you and what you will be willing to give up until you're put into that situation. But make no mistake, pursuing the Dharma does involve renunciation, whether that means becoming a monk or a nun
for continuing as a lay person. Another story, and this one may be easier for people to identify themselves in. This is from the Hekigan Roku, case 55, Dogo's, I would not tell you. One day Dogo, accompanied by his disciple Zengen, went to visit a family in which a funeral was to take place in order to express sympathy. Zengen touched the coffin and said, tell me please, is this life or is this death? Dogo said, I would not tell you whether it is life or it is death. Zengen said, why don't you tell me? Dogo said, no, I would not tell you. On their way home, Zengen said, Osho, please be kind enough to tell me. If not, I will hit you. Dogo said, strike me if you like, but I would not tell you. Zengen struck Dogo. Later, Dogo passed away. Zengen came to Sekiso and told him the whole story. Sekiso said, why don't you tell me? Excuse me. Sekiso said, I would not tell you whether it is life or it is death. Zengen said, why don't you tell me? Sekiso said, no, I would not tell you. Upon these words, Zengen attained a sudden realization. And there's more to the story, but that's enough for our purposes. In this case, Zengen is someone that we can all identify with, I think. Someone who has a strong motivation to get to the bottom of things. Someone who has, like Eka in the other story, a mind that can't be pacified a mind that is not at peace. Knowing that there is some condition of mind that can only be satisfied by answering this question is this life or is this death? What is life? What is death? This question was so much in Zengen's heart and mind. He was pushed to such an extreme observing the grief of the family at this funeral, observing this person who had once been alive just as you and I are alive and now dead, and wondering, wondering, what, what is this? What is this? What is life? 
what is death? And the question overwhelming even his love and respect for his teacher, Dogo, so that he's capable of striking Dogo, hitting him because he thinks Dogo has some answer that, that he's not sharing. And then later, The koan doesn't specify how much later. Perhaps it's many years later. Dogo passes away. And Zengen, full of grief, just as the family of this person whose funeral he attended were full of grief, goes to Sekiso and tells him the whole story of how he hit his teacher. And how this same question has tortured him for who knows how many years. And Sekiso gives the same answer in the same words that Dogo gave. But really, it's not the same question and it's not the same answer. Because Zengen is not the same person who asked that question however many years ago. There have been years of practice, years of renunciation, years of burrowing into this question. What is life? What is death? Is this life? Is this death? Well, this is right resolve. To keep asking to not be satisfied with somebody else's words, somebody else's ideas, somebody else's appreciation of reality. But digging and digging and digging for yourself, to go through suffering, to go through pain, reaching for an answer. That is renunciation. And that is your task, whether you're a monk in a monastery or someone who has a cushion at home and sits perhaps in a closet because that's the only place where you can get some peace and quiet away from the kids. That's how I did Zazen for quite a few years when my kids were young. I had a cushion in my closet and I'd go in there and close the door. Wherever you are going to be sitting, whether alone or with others, that very act of sitting yourself down, that is renunciation. Of all the activities that you could be doing, choosing this activity of not doing. So right resolve. 
you don't necessarily have to cut off an arm. And maybe he didn't really cut off an arm. Maybe that's just a symbolic story. I like to think that he really did cut off his arm. But that may be because I have a strong Catholic background and I like the stories of saints who willingly submitted to all kinds of nasty torture as a way of proving their faith. But that's just me. So the question is how to proceed. What do we give up? How do we renounce? How do we dedicate ourselves to understanding reality as it is rather than our projection of it? And that's a question that everyone has to answer for themselves. There is no hard and fast rule. No one can tell you how to practice. Teachers can make suggestions based on their own perception of where you are in your spiritual, emotional, psychological journey. Teachers can make recommendations based on their own journeys. But only you can find the proper path for yourself. whether that means taking the precepts and donning a rock suit, or just showing up to these Zoom meetings once or twice a week, Sooner or later, the path will catch up with you. And you will have questions that need answering, questions that motivate you, questions that it's hard to live without an answer to, like Zengen, like Eka. And then what are you willing to renounce to find the answer to those questions? You may simply have to renounce greed, anger, and delusion. or not renounce at all, but look more deeply into the source of greed, anger, and delusion, grasping, aversion, and ignorance. Look more deeply into your own heart and into your own mind. not trying to get rid of anything, but just opening your eyes, opening your mind, opening your heart, 
and doing so with constancy, with dedication, with a willingness to accept all things as your teacher. All things, physical pain, mental unease, emotional distress, and the opposite, joy, success. good times, approaching all situations with curiosity, with the intention of learning, being with, using every opportunity to open your heart and to open your mind. For Zengen, the question and answer superficially were the same when Dogo engaged in dialogue with him and when Sekiso engaged in dialogue with him. Superficially, no difference in the answer or the question. But Zengen was a different person at a different time, in a different place, in a different circumstance. And so, of course, the question was not the same. The question born of grief and personal loss is so different from the question asked in a philosophical frame of mind. And even though as a young man, Zengen had that question burning inside him, he needed time. He needed constant practice. And he needed personal skin in the game. his own grief over his beloved teacher's passing. Using that grief as a teacher. And bowing before it. And hearing Sekiso giving his teacher's words back to him. Suddenly, it all fell into place. And the question was answered. And like Eka, being told by Bodhidharma, there, I've pacified your mind for you. Zengen also had his mind pacified. And that too is a form of renunciation. To give up the mind, the prejudices, the delusions that have kept us company for so many years. So 
Krishna, perhaps. Perhaps some other people would like to speak. 